Hi everyone, this is Kodesha. Today I'll be showing you how to build a simple Flutter application named Light. This application functions like a flashlight. When it is first launched, it shows a white screen. Tapping on the white screen turns it black. Tapping on it again turns it white again. To start, let's create a Flutter project. Here you can see I'm using VS Code and I'm using the iOS simulator. From the View menu, choose Command Palette. You can also choose Shift Command B. Choose Flutter New Application Project. Now here, I will create a new folder in my home directory called Flutter. And I will tap select a folder to create the project in. So this will designate the folder I just created as the folder for my project. Next, I will type in the name of my application which is light. Then I press enter to confirm. A new Flutter app will be created. Now that the app has been created, I'm going to choose Run. Start debugging. This will install the app on the simulator. Here is the sample app running. If I tap on the plus button, you can see that uh, number on the screen increases. So I won't be using uh, this app. Uh, I'll be writing my own app from scratch. So I'll press the stop button to stop the simulator from running my app. Now I'm going to remove all the code except for the first two lines. So the first line there is to import the library that you will use for writing your app. So this library is called material.dart. I'm going to be using a different library. The library I'll be using is cupertino.dart. This will have widgets which have a standard iOS look and feel. As you can see here, uh, when you run your app, there is a main function. And the main function runs uh, something called my app. And there's a little red line underneath my app. That means uh, that doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and create the my app instance. So for that, I'll type S-T-L-E-S-S. -S. So this is a shortcut to create a Flutter stateless widget. You can think of widgets as uh, components that you use in your app. This particular widget will be used to build the main user interface and screen for your app. So I'm going to call this widget my app. And when I do that, you can see the error is no longer there. So now I'll modify the my app class to return an instance of Cupertino app. So you can think of Cupertino app uh, as an instance of the application. Now the instance of Cupertino app has some properties. The first screen that will be shown is assigned to the home property. So I will return an instance of Cupertino 
page scaffold. You can see there's a warning there. So here it tells me that the parameter child is required. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll set the child to be a text widget. Then I'll go to the Run menu and choose Start Debugging. This will build and run my app. You can see the app is running, but you will also see that the hello world appears at the very top left of the screen. So that's not ideal. So to make it appear in the center of the screen, I'll wrap it with another widget. I'll just stop this for now. So to make it appear in the center of the screen, I'll use the center widget. And here I'll put another comma so that when I save, that would format the text. I'm going to run the app again. As you can see, uh, Hello World now appears at the center of the screen. Let's add a button to the screen. I'm going to wrap the text widget with another widget. Now the widget I'll be using to wrap the text widget with is Cupertino button. I'll just put another comma here so that when I press save, it will be formatted. Now, note the button is grayed out. This is because I have not assigned the method to be executed when the button is tapped. I'm just going to change the name of the button to button. And I'm going to add an additional property. which is named on pressed. So here I'm going to assign a method that will print button pressed. In the console whenever the button is tapped. So when I press save, Flutter does a hot reload, that means I don't have to rebuild the application. You can see the button is no longer grayed out and when I tap on it, you can see here button pressed. Now to change the background color of the screen, I'll use Cupertino Page Scaffold's background color property. So let's say I'll set it to system blue. When I press save, you can see the entire background has become blue. We'll just uh, set it to white for the time being. So you can see the background is not white. Next, I need to store the state of the screen. That is because the screen will either be white or black. The first step that I will do is to convert my stateless widget 
into a stateful widget so that it can store the state of the screen. So let's go back here. It says convert to stateful widget. Let's do that. So my app is now a stateful widget. I'm going to set a property. Uh, I'm going to call that property light on and I'm going to set that property to true. This will contain the state of the screen. So this is a boolean. Now I'm going to use a ternary operator to set the color of the background depending on the value of light on. So instead of hot coding it to be white, it will depend on the value of light on. So I'm going to have to hot restart my app. Let's see what happens if I change light on to false and do another hot restart. So now you can see that the app now has a black background. So let's revert that back to true. and do one more hot restart. Next, I'm going to modify the on pressed method. Now, originally, it just says print button pressed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle the value of light on. So to do that, I'm just going to assign not light on to the value of light on. Let's do a hot restart. So the button still prints a button pressed in the console. What I want to do is I want to see the value for light on. So we'll do a hot reload. Now you can see that even though the state of light on is being changed when I tap the button, the background color is not changing. So to make the background color change, I will need to call the build method every time the button is tapped. So to do that, I will use set state. So I can remove these lines. And now it works as expected. When I tap the button, the screen changes color. It would be nice to make the button text change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it so that the button text will be on when the screen is black and the button text will be off when the screen is white. I'll add a second property to hold the button text and uh, later I will configure the button to use it.
So since uh, when the app is started up, the screen is going to be white. Initially, the button text should be set to off. Now, based on the value of light on, if it is true, that means the light is on, button text should be set to off. And if the light is off, then button text should be set to on. Change the text properties text to button text. I'll do that now. So now you see it says off. Tap on it, it says on. Tap on it again, it says off. Now, it's a very small button. You'll notice that I have to tap very precisely on this button in either to turn it on or off. So what I will do next is to change the size of the button so that it takes up the entire screen. So to do that, instead of using the center widget, I will use the size box widget. See? So that automatically hot reloads my app. So now I can tap anywhere on the screen. So you can see that the button text is redundant at the moment. You don't really need it anymore. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, string. I'm going to make the button text display an empty string. And I no longer need to do this line, so I'll just take it out. Okay. And now you have completed a very simple flashlight app. So I hope this has been interesting and informative, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.